Well, hello, what does it mean to have trapped emotions in your body? And why does things like Hertz frequencies work to shift those trapped emotions? I've had an amazing synchronized morning. I left home at my numbers, I don't plan these things. I left home at 10.19 and then I journeyed on my way and I got to a place where one of my ancestors used to live because I'm just discovering through my family that right where my studio is in Kingsgrove and I was divinely guided here, uh, my ancestors used to live literally around the corner. Now, when I speak about being trapped emotionally, know this, that a lot of our ancestors were trapped in a lot of fear, a lot of greed, a lot of toxic emotions, actually. And um, it takes a few of us in the bloodline to actually clear that, not just for us, but for them. If you think about time all happening simultaneously, then... I know this is a tricky concept and all we have is now our ancestors are still operating in a different dimension because we're all one as soul and so what happens when your ancestors sold out because of their fears and because of um, agreements that they made with darkness what happens then to the rest of the family maybe a lot of what you're struggling with with your wealth or with your health is a bundle of collective energy and that's what I'd like to talk in today from the Chinese perspective in that your organs hold emotions and so too do your cells. Now your cells, if we think about the word cell or cellular data or cell as in a prison, it's very easy to understand if we're holding collective energy of emotions that haven't been cleared before somebody passed away. We're holding all of that emotional entrapment within our waters, within our body. And what does a soul do when it's packaged in a fleshly garment that's so dense that it actually becomes disconnected from source? What do we do? Well, we've got to rise up. We've got to rise up now and really change and shift things using the quantum field, using the plug-in and using ancient ways actually like Hertz frequencies and meditation and breath work and lots of somatic practices. It's um, become way too common for our society to use talk therapy. And while that can help, if you're heard by somebody that's neutral and is holding space for you, it can feel really good to talk about your problems. The old saying, a problem shared is halved. The problem is, is that we talk to people that are emotionally um, connected to us and so we trigger them when we bring up things, particularly family members or people that are very close to us that have seen us at our, at our worst. And when we're trying to shift something or process something in neutrality, if we tell somebody that's running in the same vibration, it will trigger them and we actually make the problem worse. We're adding to the neural pathway. So perhaps you've heard people crying during um, an exercise session or a massage or any type of somatic healing. I see people crying all the time in sound healings. Even in light therapy, I use red light therapy. It's similar, it talks to the mitochondria and tells the cell to vibrate faster, to create things like more collagen, to heal. We are uniquely designed to heal ourselves actually. So what happens when we're packaged in this container holding our spirits that are trying to bust out and be expansive um, when we're vibrating at such a low state in our water state because spirit hovers on water though some may refer to trauma as being stored i often talk about the body as being like a computer bank um, it's trapped the energy is trapped unless you release it. And this isn't just your personal energy, it's your collective family energy. We're all one with that bloodline, the soul line, the song line. Just as Mother Earth has song lines, we have soul lines. It's, it's, um, it's amazing to me what spirit's dropping in and how easily this is shifted when we're consciously 
tapping back into the song that we have when we were born. Each of you were sung into existence to land into the body state, which is so, so beautiful when you think about it as the universe, the one song. And so however the symptoms of traumatic stress present, they can actually manifest physically within the body. In fact, the Chinese system of um, treatment tells us that all disease is called, caused by emotional roots. And there are many modern doctors aligning themselves with these types of thoughts. I've mentioned some of the books that I've been studying so that you can learn and read about these things too. Toxic emotions are a thing. And so we're shown in modern day science uh, that a lot of them have sold out, right? They have agendas to sell you things or to get you addicted to pharmaceuticals or um, food even. It's called food and drug administration for a reason because the food, when it's processed, creates the issue and the drug then seemingly gets rid of the symptom. But it's all, you know, you create the problem, you give the solution, it's all money-making, right? The ancients used things like frequencies, herbs getting back in touch with nature and they get they made containers safe circles or safe um, spaces and rituals to release these emotions without judgment in fact a lot of the ancients would create a circle and they put the person in the middle of the circle and sing them back in to unity of the tribe or of the group I just find that so beautiful because they were using collective energy intelligently. They clearly knew about this stuff and we've lost touch with it. And I believe there's a lot of people waking up to it now and tapping back into these ancient things. So we're activating certain areas of the body when we're activating them using frequencies or using touch or using light therapy or using nature such as swimming in the ocean or using movement such as yoga or breath work or Pilates even where you're stretching the matrix, the water matrix of the body, it can trigger an emotion to be released and and haven't the West been with the colonization been repressed and taught to squash these emotions down and we come from generations of that generations of repressed emotions and we're storing them in our organs and holding very low density frequencies because of that so according to Nelson who's done some research uh, there are three things that happen when an emotion is experienced we develop an emotional vibration we feel the emotion and any thoughts or physical sensations associated with it. And this is where the mind and body's interconnectedness comes into play. And we move from the emotion by processing it. And so one needs a space with permission to process the emotion without feeling judged. And even more importantly, not judging self. So we're constantly, as electrical beings, processing information that comes in. It's generated through things like um, watching television, being in environmental um, states with other people where we're processing their electronic information as well. We're literally bombarded with advertising, with programming, uh, with thoughts and ideas and belief systems of others that may not be in alignment with self. And so these emotional processing, um, it all takes place in the limbic, limbic structure of the brain, which is the central brain. And that's where your, your third eye sits. We are constantly taking in this um, information into our automatic nervous system and our nervous system sends little responses and signals to the body see it as your electrical tree communicating with your body which then communicates with your field and it's telling you the vibration is setting the vibrations into your field that match the physicality of the electrical signal of the emotion that you're holding 
I believe truly that the spirit, we're all spirits, have have decided to have an earthly based experience because in order to feel the range of all emotions, the top level emotions like ecstasy, joy, bliss state, which are closer to heavenly uh, feelings of emotions, but to experience what fear is, we have a much more expanded level of knowledge and wisdom for what love actually is then. We wouldn't take love for granted when we've experienced the total separateness from God's source. So fear, in my mind, actually aligns with death. If you are a bundle of fear, you are putting out a signal in your field that amplifies and attracts other like-minded situations that will show you fear. We pretty much get what we ask for, albeit subconsciously. And that's what I'd like you to ponder today. What were your ancestors suffering with? Uh, are you holding negative emotional energies such as resentment, poor decision making, self-sabotage, overreaction, increased stress and anxiety, depression or fatigue? These could be all symptoms that you are holding fear, not just in your organs and your cellular matrix, but in your field. And so when we hold this, uh, it's like a radio signal going out that this is what you desire. That's your desire. And if you look up the word desire with etymology like I did today, and I've mentioned this once before, but today I feel really compelled to reiterate, we see desires as something that you long for. Uh, it's to wish for, to demand, to expect, perhaps a wait uh, for, you know, we have these rituals like candles on a birthday cake we blow the candles out and we say make a wish it's we're, we're it's ingrained in us to um, seek this genie in a bottle but actually in the ancient languages if you go back desire is actually more aligned with something that's a heavenly body a star or a constellation it actually aligns with uh, your dreams that have written they're physically a vibration that are written in the stars. And I like to see it now with the new knowledge that's dropping in with Mother Wisdom, that your desires are actually more in alignment with your soul purpose. And so could our separation from source actually be that I have made an agreement, a heavenly agreement to have an earthly experience to do X, Y, Z, and it's really birthed in you and it's there when you're a child but because of low density emotions and feelings that happen to us as a result of DNA combinations things that we're meditating on things that are cutting us off from source we we gather up a frustration because we kind of forget what our desires actually are and our desires I'll reiterate in my um, my way of thinking now it's your soul destiny it's not the desire that earthly passions represent like um, craving food or craving sex or craving lots of money and it's not that those things are even bad it's the intentions behind it it's whether or not you're acting in the lower density man suit that you're built in where that's your animal your animalistic body, this fleshly suit is the animalistic body, or whether you're operating in the light body, which is more aligned with your soul body or your Christos light. Um, and that's where we lose our memory when we drop in. And here we go. We, we have to find our way literally, physically and metaphysically out of the prison state within the body. And I wanted to chat into that. So. I love, I love, love, love Chinese ancient teachings and it astounds me that a lot of the Asian cultures have lost uh, contact with these things and they're coming back again full circle through Western teachings actually. They're repackaged but they're really the same teachings and in the ancients they looked at the hand and the hand shows fractals of the organs within the body and so I'm going to read them out to you. So the thumb links to worry, uh, digestion and headaches. 
Your pointer finger links to fear and toothache or being in the flow, which is really interesting. Remember that we have duality to experience in the earthly body until our Christos light is activated again and we get to a more expanded state of consciousness which Christ called the mind of Christ and all of his disciples and his followers had access to this as the Essenes they were more in touch with nature they were able to work miracles they were able to heal the sick they were able to control their emotions. They were able to stretch their magnetic field and send it over somebody that's more low vibrational because they recognize that we're back at soul. We're one again. And so um, I'm just going to make this picture bigger so that I can not misquote it for you. The middle finger here is directly linked to anger. And I'll go through the organs that they sync to. Um, and so that's really interesting, isn't it? And this little finger here, your ring finger, is linked to grief. And I find it fascinating that in our Western maritime culture, we're taught to put a, a Saturnalia wedding ring on that finger. And this finger is linked to grief, which actually links to your lungs. The lungs are the organs that hold grief in the body. And just with me, close your eyes and picture the lungs. They're kind of shaped like wings. And when you pull in your Te or the sacred name of the Most High Creator, it actually evokes a moving in and out of the wings. And did you know that your spirit rides on breath? So too do your emotions. And then you've got your little finger in the Chinese teaching, which links to the pretense of trying to so maybe you're trying too hard and this little finger often links to a sore throat or calms the nerves or brings laughter. I find that really interesting. But like start looking up some of these things because in Chinese acupressure and, um, and so many other modalities actually, they use pressure points for healing because they're working on the meridian lines and the meridian lines are like the song lines within earth now look at the middle of the hand here in the ancients they drew a spiral here and and this is called another crown chakra here you've got crown on both sides of the hands you've got mirror mirroring you've got ten like the ten commandments so it's love and we put love at the heart and this is where the ancient eastern philosophy would say namaste so they're lifting from the heart up to the third eye and they're recognize recognizing and honoring the sacredness in you as soul and the sacredness within me as well so we don't ever set self aside when but in the Western mindset, we have self always set aside. We've got this massive inner critic that I believe is an ancestral curse coming from our ancestors that were so cut off from source that they actually fell out of love with themselves. And how can you love another if you don't love yourself? So the organs that connect with the thumb are the stomach and the spleen. The emotions that uh, connect with that are your attitudes, anxiety, depression, and worry. We have physical symptoms like stomach aches that link directly to the thumb. We have skin problems. We have headaches and nervousness linked to the thumb. I find this so fascinating. And when you take it into the mudras, you will see why they're putting different fingers together too, because it's not just the organs that links directly into the planetary as well. I mentioned that this is a Saturnalia ring. So Saturn, that's a big discussion. And I've, I've seen dropped a lot about Saturn, Aka Satan and the black sun. And it's really interesting to me. Um, and then we've got the index finger. So the index finger uh, links to the organs, kidney and bladder. Emotional attitudes are frustration, fear, and mental confusion. We have physical symptoms like upper arm discomfort, your elbow, your wrist, your muscle, back aches, toothache, gum issues, and addictions of any kind, including digestive issues as well. So addictions are directly linked 
to fear within the index finger, which I find amazing. And we point the finger, don't we, when we are judgmental. But I've always been taught in the spiritual realm that when you're doing work with light coming out of your hands, the reason we work with our hands to throw light is because these are the extremities of the nervous system. And so if you are firing with love energies, you would use your hands to clear. This is why Moses held his hands up in order to win the battle. He was channeling the chi source energy in. He recognized that he was a conduit and surely he learned these things in the mystical schools of Egypt, like most of the prophets did. The middle finger links to, and this is really funny because I, I had a healing session once and this finger was moving like this and I was hearing all this stuff like a big one up to the realms that I was processing then and that's all in your field. Everything that's happening in the planetary realm is also happening within you because you're the kingdom, you are the universe. Think about all your ancestors that have died They've gone back to these basic elements. The water's gone back to water. The flesh has gone back to the earth. The, the nervous system fire has gone back to the spiritual. The breath has gone back to your tevafe. And so you're not separate to the universe. You are the universe in this beautiful package. So the middle finger uh, actually links to the liver and the gallbladder. And it links to emotional attitudes like indecisiveness, anger, irritability. The physical symptoms are circulation problems, menstrual problems, eye vision problems, fatigue, migraine, and frontal headaches. Uh, it's so interesting. I've met so many women at the moment that are struggling with menstrual problems or uh, endometriosis or tumors within their womb or they're bleeding a lot particularly since the recent agenda now think about the density of what the body is holding emotionally for those that would have felt pushed into going against their free will maybe they were holding a lot more fear and you might understand what I spoke about the other day where I was shown the Reaper as a cloud spirit and saying that the fields are ripe. And so if you're holding a lot of fear, you're going to be more pressured to bow to Babylon. You're going to be more pressured to put toxicity into your body. You're matching vibration for vibration. Because if you're running in love and trust, you know that you're going to be provided for. You're not going to bow to the dollar. You're not going to be bowing to lower density things that are without of the universe. You are the universe. You are. You are running in love energy. So the ring finger links directly to lungs and the large intestine. Now we hold a lot of our shit in our large intestine, right? It's blocked, it's chogged. If we haven't processed emotions, energy gets stuck and so too does the physical matter. And that happens with our dung gate as mentioned in the Solomon's temple. So your dung gate needs clearing. That's why I've been working consciously on having colonics and, and drinking lots more living water and clearing my system of the crap because a lot of it's ancestral vibration matches vibration. When I'm depressed or when you're depressed too, we gravitate to low vibrational foods. We need to lift that, we need to shift that, we need to change it. And so the attitudes and, and emotions linked to the ring finger, interesting, interestingly, I just wanna point out, this is the ring you put your wedding ring on, are uh, linked to negativity, sadness, fear of rejection and grief. Now think about that if you've dodged getting married people, it's not such a bad thing because marriage, original marriage was never instigated by a government, a controlling of the mind. There's been so much shame put over humanity for those that aren't married or those that haven't made a commitment, you know, in this particular fashion. But if it's all done within a stony church building or it's all done to protect the family name, I just wonder what kind of vibration that is. That's a very low vibrational state, actually. Um, please remember that a lot of the prophetic ones were born of a virgin and exactly for that reason because they dodged that systematic programming that had to be birthed outside of that construct in order to make a change. Please ponder that. And so then we get to the little finger 
The organs are the heart and the small intestine. The emotional attitudes are insecurity, nervousness, judgment, low self-esteem. Uh, we, we do this when we're little, like we make a pinky swear agreement, which is all done because we're worried about not being accepted. The physical symptoms of this little pinky finger are blood pressure, heart conditions, sore throat, bloating, bone and nerve problems. And I just find this so amazing. I spoke briefly this morning on in my Echo Circle Sanctuary group upon the, about the organs. So I might reiterate that here. Um, of which organ holds which emotion? I'll just pull out my chart. So the lungs hold sadness and grief. So if you are grieving, you need to actually honor that grief, thank it, breathe it out because emotions float on the breath and breathe the opposite in. So what would be the opposite to sadness? You need to replace sadness with joy in this region of the body. See how the lungs are the guardian protectors of the heart space, which is your, where your magnetic field exudes from, and this is where you attract things from. There are ancient crystals within this heart that the Buddhists teach about that have been there before you were even constructed. And I, I, I find this sort of stuff amazing because the closest crystal to the crystals found within the heart chakra and within the pineal gland are quartz crystals. And quartz is seen to be uh, your master crystal or your major conductor. And this is why Christ is mentioned as a crystalline being. Now I've met Christ in crystalline fashion. I had to see him under the water in the ocean because I feel like the salt conducts this crystal energy. Salt is a crystal too, right? Salt actually used to be an ancient currency. But, um, and we've got all these sayings like be the salt of the earth. That means be the conductor for the vibration of life, which is positive energy. It's beautiful, fruitful emotions. It's not judgmental. It's not putting another person down. It's, it's having a compassion state for what they've walked through and what their ancestors have walked through in being cut off in this fear route. Fear actually kills us. Fear is what creates disease actually. And this is what the ancient Chinese teach, that holding these lower based emotions in our organs, then expanding that into the skin, which is our largest organ, we are holding a matrix in our waters, in our bitter waters that then attract because they end up in our in our light field then attract situations to say oh I thought that's what you were asking for because that's what you were holding that's how the universe works actually it matches vibration for vibration the universe is actually neutral it's neutral it just gives you your desires and so subconsciously we are holding these desires that we're not aware of and that's what I'd like you to learn to shift today the liver holds anger. Now, if I'm working with an alcoholic, I will always work on the liver and the liver is located under your right rib. Uh, an alcoholic is attracted to alcohol because alcohol lowers your vibration. It affects the liver in the body. And so we're matching vibration for vibration. I have so much compassion for that. The alcoholism is just the band-aid. I ask the person what they're trying to get to the root of, what are they covering up? Uh, and most of it's subconscious. Most of it hasn't been processed. Then we get to the kidneys. The kidneys hold fear. Now the kidneys flush your urine and your urine uh, is actually a lot more sacred than you think. We've been taught that it's dirty. We've been taught that urine is, um, you know, a bit like the other cavity, that it's a bit disgusting but in fact urine is a part of your blood it links into your plasma which is light and so a lot of the ancients used to do urine therapy actually and you can research that it was taken internally it was used externally it was actually used to build up immunity it was used long before there were any injection injectables um, the injectables have taken that knowledge and they're putting other types of DNA into mixing in with heavy metals. Now, metal holds memory. And so if you're popping metal into your sacred temple body, not only does it 
rush to certain parts of the organs, the heart, third eye. Um, we are manipulating energies with frequencies uh, that are used through technology and then we've got uh, a very easy easy mass manipulation of the energy fields because we're matching energy for energy uh, I over the years I've seen many clients vomit up black goo which is carbon and carbon links right into your 666 state it's your body state it's the house state it's a dense state but it's a malleable state it's a manipulative state it's not who you really are as a fire being when you're back plugged into divinity. But here we are in this matrix where energy is being cut and divided by a divine plan, I believe, because you cannot attract a curse without a cause. So stop blaming external, stop blaming your ancestors. It's up to you to shift the energies or the emotions that you're holding, not just for you, but for them. I love doing this ancestral work. The heart is meant to hold joy, but the heart also links into soul. This is where blood pumps from, right? We have four chambers within the heart. I believe the heart directly links into the Ark of the Covenant or where love is meant to abide. Um, but we hold a lot of what's been explained to me uh, by my soul team is that we hold altars in the heart we hold uh, fragmentations of our soul actually where we've operated in different timelines with different energies uh, we might have a nickname or if you've suffered trauma you might dissociate you might be operating as um, when you're triggered you might go back to the three-year-old you but uh, when you're feeling safe and comfortable, you might be operating from higher self and all of this is happening without you realizing until you consciously fuse your inner child, your now self and your higher self and any other fractals in between. You pull them back together and you embody them back to love. So that means loving aspects of your shadow self or your carbon self that you don't really like. And so how do we do that? How do we figure out what I don't like about me? Well, I'll tell you a little secret. Whatever you don't like in another, that's exactly what you don't like in yourself. So last night in Sound Circle, we talked about triggers. And I, I think my live yesterday was touching on triggers. And it's been a beautiful vibrational day. It's the 22nd of November. And when I jumped on, I noticed that there were 222 of you on my platform online. And I thought, this is just beautiful because two links into the vibration of the heart, the vibration of love. We had a massive awakening in 2022. Um, we are so, so precious and all of us are. And to lift consciousness, you can't be thinking that the others aren't worthy of that. It's actually your job to lift the energy fields for them, to hold the vibration. It's the hundredth monkey um, experiment, right? So how do we as energetic beings learn new ways or old ways reinstated actually? It's energetically. We're energetic beings over and above anything else. We're all vibrating. But you, when you're vibrating in fear, anger, sadness, grief, and worry, worries held in the spleen, you are not running at full capacity. Your organs are not in sync with the vibration of heaven. So I'd like you to see yourself as a conduit today, as a rod. Your spine is a sacred rod holding these energies and whatever emotion that you're holding in each energy center needs to be cleared so that the energy can flow up and down graciously you're not meant to hold things the whole purpose of being human is to learn how to manipulate energies and how to use emotions to manifest if you'd like to learn more about that please ask me about my nine week course i speak very deeply into that there and you may not even grasp the concept the first time you've listened to it. I know I didn't. Things need to be said over and over and over again. That's why I've pre-recorded um, course, that course so that you can listen to it over and over again because in order to um, embrace the new, which is actually the ancient, you have to unlearn the belief systems that you're holding. So if you think that you're not worthy of holding wealth, then you won't. If you think that you're not worthy of being healed, 
energetically or emotionally, you won't. And know that these low dense emotions cause disease. So if you know somebody that's suffering with any type of disease, please, please tag them in this or get them to study about frequencies and start working in the light field, which has access to the quantum field. You'll find a much faster, gentler, rapid shift when you're using chi energy, as opposed to trying to just work in the matter density, because you're working at a higher vibrational frequency. These are beautiful, beautiful aspects. Now, another day I might talk to you about the ear and how the ear has the same acupressure fractals. In fact, you'll see photographs of diagrams in Chinese, ancient Chinese medicine that the ear is a fractal of you as a fetus curled up in the womb. It's all golden fee ratio. But for golden fee ratio, the spiral of life, which is also in the crown chakra of the hand where your energy comes out, we have to get to a point of exit. So I'm witnessing my troubles and trials. I'm witnessing the patterns in my life. Then I have my spiritual awakening and then I have an aha moment and then I exit the matrix. I exit the way I'm used to operating. I, I, I'm starting to use my triggers as my power. I'm starting to use these lower frequency emotions, not as the demons, not matching that, but seeing them as a friend that's showing me what I'm shifting out, not just out of me, but out of my family line. So I went and blessed the land where my great grandfather used to live today. I found two houses and I was observing and witnessing the fractals of the street names that are very similar street names to where I live in a different suburb. These are fractals. We have song lines in the earth, energy points in the earth. We have song lines within the body, which are our meridian lines. And this is what we need to calm, to access a higher state of consciousness, to access higher emotional energies so that we can operate at manifestation knowing our full worth knowing our destiny is blessed is abundant i'm playing 888 hertz frequencies on purpose today to step out of the 777 into the 888 and climb and remember that you are an interdimensional being you have access to the kingdom of heaven now and you do that by programming with the ancient things that are your birthright. Don't let lower density energy steal it from you. Don't let fear cause death. Love gives life. Eat love, meditate on love, think loving thoughts. And if it's, if it's a thought that's on autopilot, catch it and use the measuring stick or the rod, which is your spine, to measure it up. Is this thought in alignment with loving, self loving the creator and loving others if it isn't we need to hit the delete button uh, drop me a comment if this has helped i'm just giving you all a wave hey Zena. hey kate hey jamie hey esley thanks for coming last night it's really good to have you here hi 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 lauren rupesh lisa nick oh my gosh hi everybody tash there's so many here today who would have thought um, Tinks, I love you. It's so good to have you here. If I've missed your name, all apologies. Please treat your body as a sacred temple that it is, but know that it's just your home. Clean your house and be the gatekeeper of higher vibrational emotions. Everything is emotional. Everything is energy in motion. Matter vibrates and you deserve to vibrate at the highest fire state. Um, when God has children, what are children called? Love you. Bye.